Hey my girls, so today I'm going to be chatting to you guys about a topic that is obviously very close to my heart. I have never opened up so in depth about, you know, my struggle with binge eating disorder in the past, but I really do hope that this video can just help anyone who is maybe struggling right now. Please just remember that everything I say in this video is based on my own personal experience. It is not there to diagnose or treat any type of eating disorder. If you are struggling, then I would advise seeking help from medical experts. So my binge eating disorder kind of developed for me in high school, I would say around um, 2010 or so, but it was definitely not to the extreme that it has been in the past couple of years. Maybe just like small um, episodes that kind of seem insignificant if I look back on them at the moment. Um, when I was matriculating before our matric dance season came in, um, I was definitely one of those girls that, you know, wanted to lose a little bit of weight to look her best in, in my matric dance dress, which I did. I think I lost like three to four kgs for my matric dance, but my binge eating only really started getting bad the year after matric. So in 2012, we went on matric back and I remember chatting to one of my friends about really wanting to focus on looking better and dieting, etc. Um, the first year out of matric and that's exactly what we did and we decided to go on a diet together and funny enough the first diet that I ever did um, was actually calorie tracking which is exactly what I do right now as well as all my clients but I think you know when I started calorie tracking for the first time I was quite a competitive person and in the back of my mind I was kind of thinking like I want to lose weight faster than she does and I want to uh, get to a point where my body looks better than hers um, faster than what hers does so when I worked out my calories on my fitness pile that was the app that we were using to track I can't actually remember what my allocated calories were but I know that I had decided to do like 800 to 1000 calories per day now bearing in mind I'm like first joy out of metric um, I'm young I'm relatively active uh, obviously I was really wanting to focus on on dieting and getting healthy etc the year after my trick so I was really pushing to train um, doing a lot more training than I probably should have done and really really under eating so that's kind of how my binge eating started in 2013 which was my first year out of my trick I'd actually decided I wanted to pursue a career in culinary arts um, which was kind of ironic considering the fact that, you know, my, my eating disorder was kind of just starting. So I was going to a college in Randburg that was basically like 30 to 40 minutes from where I was staying. And every single day I would make sure I had my lunchbox packed with my breakfast and my lunch and some snacks. I know um, I actually started doing like a raw food diet in the beginning where I literally ate nothing but like raw vegetables and fruits which is absolutely insane and that's how I was making up most of my calories and then in the evenings I would come home from college and just have like dinner with my family whatever they were having because I knew that if I was super restrictive during the day I would be fine to have dinner with my, with my family um, however many calories it kind of was going to be so throughout my college year I would get to Ramberg super early and go spend like an hour and a half or so at gym um, before having my first meal funny that what is that called again fasted cardio there you go so every day I was doing fasted cardio eating like little to no calories during the day and then at home I'd have a big meal with my parents and this is kind of where you know the whole restrictive diet uh, restrictive dieting cycle started is after a couple of weeks every time after dinner when my parents would go to bed I would start um, my dad used to have you know that container of of nuts that you get from Woolworths he used to have that in the cupboard and I would start like eating the nuts out of the container and also I was obsessed with like going to Diskim and buying out that health food aisle so I had nut butters in every single variation possible so if I wasn't eating nuts out of the container I was eating nut nut butters out of the jar and that's pretty much where the binge eating just kind of elevated from there so even with my binge eating disorder developing throughout this year, which I think was 2013, I actually did end up losing a little bit of weight, not much. I didn't have much weight to lose, much weight to lose to begin with. I was already tiny um, and now I was just doing cardio and aggressively under eating. 
and I lost about four kgs. So that was kind of like the start of it. The cycle definitely started throughout this year um, through me like overeating in the in the evenings. And that kind of was the the big start of my binge eating disorder. In 2014 was when shit really started to hit the fan. So obviously I've spent the last year in a college completely surrounded by food day in and day out. Also with my college, we would spend a couple months at the actual college and then they would send us on a placement to like a restaurant or a hotel or a catering company um, for the other half of the year to kind of gain experience. So I was constantly surrounded by food. I was trying to um, diet aggressively by under eating. And in 2014 is when, when it really got out of hand. One of the most aggressive binges I had in 2014, and I will never ever forget it. It always is at the back of my mind as a reminder, but I was I was on a placement at a hotel and I was working the breakfast buffet. I was the only chef working in the pastry department that morning. And um, part of that is we would have to take frozen croissants out the freezer and put them on a tray and get them baked off for the breakfast buffet. And generally there's also like leftover croissants uh, from the previous day and we would use those croissants to make like bread and butter pudding for the staff canteen um, for lunchtime and I don't I don't really remember what had kind of gotten into me on this specific day but this was one of the most aggressive binges that I had and I ended up eating 17 croissants in one sitting now bear in mind 17 croissants in in your stomach is quite a lot of food and because i had been binging you know so excessively on and off the past couple months my stomach was quite stretched so i could handle quite a lot of volume in my stomach but it made me extremely extremely sick um and i can't remember for certain but i I can almost assure you that i would have had to have left work early on that day because of the way that i was feeling because your your stomach really struggles to break down you know, that quantity of food, especially in in croissants. So that was definitely one of the the big binges that led me to realize that, you know, there was ultimately something wrong and I needed needed to get help. And I, I didn't know what to do. So after that binge day, it was the first day that I decided to kind of open up to my parents about you know, what what I assumed to have been an eating disorder, I didn't really understand it. Um, and imagine trying to explain to someone that that the problem that you have with food is that you just can't stop eating. And I think my my parents my parents really struggled to to comprehend exactly what I was trying to tell them because, you know, this is not something that they've maybe heard of before or or that they can understand. And Obviously, you know, my, my dad's initial initial thought was like, what do you mean you can't stop eating? Like, just just stop, stop eating when you're full. And binge eating is so much more complicated than that. You know, you you lose your your feeling of control around food. And, and it's not like you you have a choice almost when when you're in a binge. So, you know, I spoke to my parents about it and and cried and you know tried to explain the the seriousness of the matter and eventually we decided to go to a rehabilitation center which was also so happened to have been in Ramberg I had to put my studies on hold and you know we went to the center and the psychologist said we're happy to admit you you'll have to spend a couple of weeks here and the very next day I was admitted into the rehab so I spent a couple of weeks in rehab and there are certain components that I kind of learned in rehab that I think I still kind of live by. So, you know, we learn a lot of things about kind of just creating structure and routine. But I think what I lacked from the rehab was the fact that the eating disorder patients that they were working with there were not binge eating patients. They were more like bulimia, anorexia patients. And, and a lot of stuff that we were kind of focused on was things that should be more focused on with those kinds of patients, you know. So... The routine and structure that we that we had in terms of focusing on frequent meal times, um, that kind of stuff definitely worked. But we also had to go to like classes with with other people and all of that. But ultimately, nothing that I took out of rehab actually helped me deal with my urges to binge. And that was the one thing that I really had to work on. I also think that going into rehab 
you know, we need to keep in mind that even though I had binge eating disorder, all that was on my mind the whole time was that all I wanted was to lose weight. I almost didn't care about the fact that I was a binger because the whole reason that this binge eating disorder started in the first place was because my main focus was weight loss, even though I didn't have much weight to lose. But now through my binging, I was going through that whole cycle of gaining and losing and gaining and losing. And all I ultimately wanted out of rehab was to to get my weights under control and not actually to focus on recovery. So I think in a sense that that was also a little bit of a setback for me is, is that my main goal in rehab wasn't actually recovering from my binge eating disorder. And even while I was in rehab, exercise was like strictly forbidden for binge eating or for eating disorder patients in general. And I would spend a lot of my time in my room like doing jumping jacks and burpees just so that I could burn calories because I wanted to leave rehab knowing that I had also lost weight. Um, and that was definitely a setback for me as well. A lot of people, you know, ask me if they think that, if, if I think that rehab helped my binging. And, you know, as I said, I think the structure and the routine that I got out of rehab in terms of having frequent meal times and, you know, that kind of stuff is stuff that I still include in my day to day life. But ultimately, I never learned anything that I could take away from rehab in the long term. I didn't learn how to deal with my binge urges and my binge urges were, were what was bringing me back into binging every single time. So obviously it's different for everyone. People can re get different results out of rehabilitation and seeing psychologists and dietitians and psychiatrists. But in this specific case, it didn't really work for me. Very soon after coming out of rehab, we had um, my it was my mom's birthday, like one of the big number birthdays. Um, and I just remember it was maybe like two or three days after getting out of rehab and I got absolutely slosh drunk. And this was also one of my setbacks with my binging is that because my binge eating disorder was so bad, I also became a binge drinker. Um, all everything that I was drinking tasted like like juice like I could just have ciders on ciders on ciders with absolutely no sense of self-control and I got absolutely sloshed on that night so now so now I was dealing with binge eating not being able to co control my alcohol um, and I just felt like my life was a wreck to be honest so coming out of rehab I did carry on implementing some of the things that we had had learned so you know, focusing on meal frequency throughout the day was definitely something that helped me a lot. So I would do that, uh, being mindful with your meals, not eating in front of the TV, making sure that you're actually sitting down at a table when you eat. That's definitely something that I continue to focus on. But after like a month or two, the binge, the binge urges just came back. And because I hadn't learned anything that was actually helping me to deal with the urge itself, I just started binging again. So basically for the rest of the year of 2014, this was maybe two months after coming out of rehab, the, the rest six months of the year was just me carrying on going from one restrictive diet, losing weight, uh, having a binge, gaining all the weight back. And that was just like a, an onward cycle for the rest of the year. And I would literally gain up to seven kgs in one weekend. So I would diet down really, really hard. Monday to Friday and then Saturday and Sunday would come and I would lose all self-control and just gain the weight back plus more and to gain seven kgs in two days you know you have to eat a lot of food to gain that much weight. I also started to find that throughout my time of binging I started doing things that were very compulsive because I thought it was going to help me um, get over my binging so in in 2015, in the beginning of the year, I, I was so frustrated and I was so done with being a binge eater that I decided I'm packing my bags and I'm moving to another city and I'm leaving my binge eating in Pretoria. So I got offered a job in, at like a, a gourmet burger restaurant in Durban and I, I was, I couldn't have been more excited, you know. Because I knew that me by me leaving, it meant that I was leaving potentially my binge eating behind and I could go and start a new life over from scratch. And I was actually in a relationship at the time. And even though we had been in a relationship for a while, I just didn't care because, because all I cared about was, was recovering and getting over my binging. And I felt like I couldn't do anything in my life and I couldn't move forward from anything 
until I had tackled my binging. So after settling down in Durban, it didn't take long before, before the binge urges came back. And the hardest part was everything that I had to help me deal with my binging was still in Pretoria. I had, I had no family. I had no friends in Durban. Um, I, d I didn't have anyone to help me. So, so when the binging urges came back again while I was living in Durban, there was nothing that I felt I could do. So I eventually, after some time, decided I need to try and get help again. And I found a psychologist and a dietitian that were both like within close proximity to each other. Um, that was quite a drive away from where I was staying in Durban North. They were based in Hillcrest. But I was like, you know what? Once a week, I'm just going to go through. and I'm going to see this dietitian and the psychologist. And I think I saw the psychologist twice and I saw the dietitian once. And the diet, every, every time I tried to find a dietitian, I would always look for someone that specialized in eating disorders because that, that was obviously what I needed help with. And this specific dietitian, I, I didn't feel like was understanding the, the situation and the, just how bad the problem was. And for that reason, I couldn't go back to see her again. And a similar kind of situation happened with the psychologist. Is the psychologist basically tried to convince me that the reason I'm binging is because of like childhood trauma of, you know, my parents maybe not packing me sufficient lunch boxes for, for school. And that, this was just the most, you know, kind of barbaric thing for, for me to hear because I knew exactly why my binge eating developed. My binge eating developed because I dieted like shit. I tried to lose weight and I thought that the best way for me to do it was going to be for me to under eat and essentially that's what drove my binge eating and because I I consistently gave in to urges for so long and for, for so many months and years, it de I developed a habit that I didn't know how to break and what I really needed from a psychologist is for someone to help me deal with those urges. Whenever you know someone asks me what does what is a binge? You know, what does a binging urge feel like? And, you know, for a lot of people who actually struggle with binge eating and not overeating or emotional eating, it's it's very aggressive. And for me, a binge urge and giving into a binge is like an out-of-body experience. You know, when the urge arises and I give in by having the first block of chocolate or the first biscuits, everything from there just, just goes crazy. Like... I feel like I become a puppet to my mind and that every action that I take there after giving into that urge is no longer me being in control. As if I gave my, my body away to someone else and they're the ones in control of the decisions that I'm making. Because I knew deep down that I didn't want to binge. I didn't want to, you know, eat bottomless pits of biscuits and cookies and tubs of ice cream in one sitting. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to focus on losing weight and being healthy, not on, you know, eating shit tons of food. And that's what an urge feels, feels like. It feels like you are no longer in control of any decision that you're making once you give in to that urge. And only when your body physically cannot consume any more food do you start sitting with that feeling of guilt um, and, and being depressed, etc. So it's very different in a sense to overeating everyone overeats. Like I would be more upset if people never overate. Everyone goes to a braai and maybe has now and then some extra slices of garlic bread or goes out for dinner and has more pizza than maybe what they anticipated on having. There is nothing wrong with overeating. Like overeating is completely okay and normal. It's normal for people to overeat now and then. But, but binge eating is just is so much more than that. It is so, it's so damaging and soul destroying and you go on like a guilt trip every single time you have a binge and it is excessive it is it is excessive to a point that it almost seems impossible that a normal human can consume that much food but yet I made it I made it possible for myself for that to happen and that's what's so crazy about binging ultimately I would eat until I was I was sick beyond comprehension I would eat pizzas and biscuits and I, I finished out a tub of tin roof ice cream once while I was living in Durban by myself I've and the worst part is if I can't find anything to binge on I will make something I will bake a cake to binge on a cake 
if all I had was like a loaf of bread and a, and a jar of peanut butter, I would make sure to finish off that whole loaf of bread and peanut butter. And that is not something that overeaters do. You know, that, that kind of behavior is so compulsive and that is why it's linked to binge eating. So after a few months of living in Durban, I decided to come home. My parents were going through a divorce at the time. And you know what? I really felt like I needed, I needed my family so that I could get the support that I needed for my binging as well as through my parents' divorce. And I also felt like I had to be there for my family to support them through the whole divorce process. It was only in 2016 that I decided to pursue my career as a personal trainer. And while I was actually working as a chef in Durban was when I started doing my studies for my personal training. And obviously with my relationship with food being so bad, I would do a lot of compensating for my binges by training and overtraining. And essentially I fell in love with fitness um, while my binge eating was at its absolute worst. In February or so of 2016, I was offered an opportunity to go and um, be a cheerleader in IPL. Now, I've always wanted to travel and this was something that I was, I was very excited about to be able to go to India and, you know, do cheerleading, which is, is something that was really fun to me. I was also a dancer when I was in high school. Um, so I was really, really keen on it. But obviously, in order for me to go, my initial thought process was that I really have to lose weight if I want to go to IPL. So there we go with me carrying on with my restrictive dieting process. I went on a hectic diet again um, to lose weight for the IPL and I didn't have a lot of time. So, you know, it was as restrictive as it could possibly have been. Um, but I had very few binges through this process. And I think it was just because I was, I was so in a sense motivated because I didn't have a choice. I knew that like, you know, it's around the corner and I had to do what I had to do. Um, and I guess in a sense, it kind of reduced my binging. <laughs> Before heading through to the IPL, uh, before the tournament had started, I actually got down to the lowest weight that I had ever been since metric. So after like, I don't know, what had it been now, like two, two, just over two years, and I got my weight back down to my metric weight, which was the weight that I was originally trying to improve on, um, I got back down to my metric weight. So, you know, went to the IPL tournament, had a big jaw. Um, I managed to keep my binging under control in a sense. I think it was only like the last week of the two months where I really, really started struggling again. But as I got back to SA, shit just hit the fan again. At this point, after coming back from India is when I properly got into, you know, my passion for fitness. I started off doing like home personal training from people's houses and you know, my business really took off from there and I started employing other personal trainers to work under me and they were all working in different cities. And, you know, I had a, I was very passionate about my job and I loved training and I loved helping people. But at the same time, you know, um, while busy helping people lose weight, I couldn't keep my own weight under control because my binging was still so bad. My weight fluctuations were still so crazy. And I, I didn't feel like I could have those kinds of conversations with my clients, you know, like, and it was a really hard time for me because essentially I was, I was a fat personal trainer, which I didn't find um, at that time to be acceptable. You know, I really wanted to be in good shape. And, and I think it really held me back because ultimately I was, I was feeling very insecure about myself. You know, everything between 2016 to 2020, has has honestly just been like a total blur for me. It was it was constant cycles of restrictive dieting, um, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. And I can literally go back in my photo gallery and find at least four reverse transformations a year from that period between you know 2016 and 2020 because. I would lose a ton of weight and then I'd gain a ton of weight and the cycle just went on and on and on. I think during this period is ultimately when I tried every single diet that you could possibly try uh, between keto and juice cleansers and detoxes and I don't know, you know, whatever diets are out there. I'm, I'm very certain that in that four year period, I did all of them. And from this, my cycle of binge eating just carried on. You know, it was... 
it was lose some weight and gain some weight and and that just went on and on for the, those four years and because my restrictive dieting was so bad my binges just got worse so what would start as like a three-day binge would end up being a three-week binge which would end up being a, a month binge which would end up being a month and a half binge and because I wasn't actually focusing on addressing my binging behavior um, my binges would not would not calm down through the four years they just got worse throughout these four years was when you know I should have been having a life of you know being around friends and and going through relationships and you know creating memories with people and ultimately I lost out on all of that. And I lost out on it because I pushed everyone away. And I pushed everyone away because I had no time for anything other than dieting. Because all I wanted was to lose weight, but I was so I was so stuck in the cycle of of trying so hard and then self-sabotaging you know all the progress that I was making that I never gave myself I never gave myself an opportunity to to go out with friends and you know build on proper relationships because losing weight was the only thing that was important to me and and unless I weighed a certain amount or you know my my hip measurement was a certain amount I wouldn't allow myself to have the privilege of going out with friends. And also because I was insecure. Like, what are people going to say about the girl that can't keep her weight under control? Like, last week when we saw her, she was half the size of what she looks like now. And I didn't know how to deal with that. And that was really hard for me. So I lost out on a few years of my life where... A few years of my life that should have been important... And I think that's partly, you know, why I why I have the business that I do now because I don't want other people to to lose out on parts of their lives that were important because all they were worried about was losing weight. Throughout this process of of trying to recover, I've seen psychologists, and I, my mom once sent me to a hypnotherapist who apparently helped some people stop smoking and she thought maybe he would be able to help me stop binging but that obviously didn't work um I read countless books you know I, I saw so many dietitians more dietitians than all the dietitians I also worked with multiple coaches I took medication for depression I was on anxiety medication at a stage and none of that stuff worked and none of it worked because I wasn't addressing my urges to binge and I, I wasn't making fixing my relationship with food a priority because all I needed or all I wanted was to lose weight. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty helpless. You know, like there's, there's nothing that I can do that's working. I don't know how to get through it on my own. Um, and it was just a very, very tough time for me. And I just carried on. I carried on trying even though I wasn't doing the right things, I carried on trying different diets and it was just a very, very crazy time for me. And in 2019, I guess I reached another, another level of crazy where I decided to do something that I thought would make me binge free. And it was in 2019 that I decided to go for a breast augmentation. Now, obviously I like having nice big boobs and I do love my boobs the way that they are now but when I went for my breast augmentation I went and did it for the wrong reasons I knew after going with my for my consult that in order to have a breast augmentation done you have to be at least five kgs away from your goal weight so obviously in my mind I was like well this is fantastic because now I'm going to have to work really hard to get five kgs away from my goal weight. And I know that if I don't maintain that, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to screw up my augmentation. So, you know, it was kind of like it was a very extreme and all or nothing approach to me trying another diet, essentially. So I really did put myself through hell, I guess. And 
I'll have you know that I still binged after having my augmentation done um, because, as I said before, I wasn't really addressing anything that was causing my binging. And what made it worse was that I so badly wanted to get better. I so badly didn't want to be a binge eater, but I wasn't, I wasn't ready to, to sacrifice not losing weight because I wanted to lose weight so bad, um, even though... I wasn't actually losing weight because my binging was so bad, but I was just, I was, I was not willing to do anything sustainable. And I guess that's why I relate, you know, in my business to the women that I work with so much, because I understand how, how desperate you can be and how desperate you can feel when you, you're overwhelmed by the fact that losing 10 kgs might take you so long and you want to lose it today. Trust me when I say that I completely get that. I completely do understand. In 2019 was also the year that I reached the highest weight I ever had. Um, I was sitting just below 80 kgs um, and bearing in mind that I started dieting at 60. And at that point, you're kind of just sitting there asking yourself, how on earth did you let it get this bad? And, and how are you going to carry on going, going on like this? At this point, my binging was out of control. You know, if I had nothing to binge on, I'd make a plan. I would Uber Eats. I would stop at McDonald's on the way to, to home training clients and buy like three breakfasts that I would shovel into my mouth in the car on the way to a client. I would stop at the garage on the way home and buy everything that I could so that I could try eat most of it in the car. And the rest, when I got home, I would shove through my bedroom window so that I could walk in from the front of my house without my parents knowing that I was going to have a binge. So everything was very secretive and it was very, very extreme. I ended up in a hospital a couple of times because the binging got so bad. And understand that, you know, you're consuming an excess amount of food. And I reached a point where I'd be lying in bed and I physically couldn't move. And the binges would make me feel disgusting. You know, like when you're eating so much food, you start smelling bad, you're exhausted, you're fatigued. It constantly feels like all you need to do is have a shower because your body is so sticky trying to break down, you know, all of this food that you've been eating. And I think that just made the situation so much worse for me as well. When COVID started is really when things started to take a turn in a more positive direction for me. Now, the components of my actual recovery have been very multifaceted. People always ask me, like, what was the one thing that really uh, was the turning point for you? And truth truthfully, there, there was never one thing, you know, like when it comes to recovering from an eating disorder, there are so many components that work together to help you with your recovery. The first thing I started to do was really started to focus on making sure that I had structure and routine in my life. And these were two very important components. I started eating even if I wasn't hungry as part of having structure and routine in my life meant I had to focus on having um, more meal times and um, more set times that I was actually like, I'm going to have a meal now. And even if I wasn't hungry, I made sure to have that meal. And yes, I didn't initially from the get-go start including all of my trigger foods but I always made sure to have dessert and you guys know I'm a big fan of a, des of a dessert and it's for this reason so you know for all my meals I always made sure to have a starter and a main course for every meal and this really just helped me almost trick my binging brain into thinking that I was getting that fulfillment that I used to get from binging because ultimately you know, my binging brain loved me feeling excessively full. And by having two meals at every meal meant that after every meal, I was always feeling full and I was always feeling satisfied, even if it meant that I was having more calories than maybe what I would have initially prescribed myself for weight loss. Apart from that, my dessert meal, where I always included my trigger foods, but still made sure that, you know, my dessert meal was full of volume. You guys know that I love Mari Biscuit dessert and I still include Mari Biscuit dessert. Even today, two days late, two years later, I still love my Mari Biscuit dessert. And having all that volume and having that structure and that routine and allowing myself to have the foods that before I was would never allow myself to have and then binge on all of them um, really, really helped me a lot. 
A lot of people always ask me if I think tracking calories causes disordered eating and obviously I'm going to say yes because I essentially developed an eating disorder from tracking but it wasn't because of tracking it was because of the way that I tracked. If you were going to make tracking another restrictive diet and eat minimal calories then yes you can you know um, you can end up with disordered eating behaviors because you are essentially under eating and just making it another restrictive diet. If you track to eat enough food and you track for education so that you can learn about calories and food um, and just use it as like something to measure and not something to be obsessed about, then I don't see any issue with tracking. And that's why I, I started tracking again during my recovery process because I was allowing myself to have a lot more food than what I was before. And um, it helped me to just create that structure that I needed. Later is obviously when I met Vickers. And um, Vickers has also played like a huge role in my recovery because, you know, when I met him, I knew we would end up being in, you know, a long-term relationship. And before we even started dating, I said, listen, this is the situation. This is what you need to know. This is, this is what could potentially happen. If it does happen, I need you to handle it like this. Don't handle it like this. Um, I need you to support me like this and don't try and be supportive like this because that's probably not going to be supportive and really just having that open end communication with him um, helped me get the support that I needed. And yes, I'm sure that he didn't understand it at first, much like me trying to have that conversation with my parents about my eating disorder and binge eating and you know, it's, it's a very difficult thing to explain to someone and it's a very difficult thing for someone to understand, especially if they haven't actually been in that situation. But Vickers just remained supportive. He gave me the support that I needed and that essentially really helped my recovery process as well. So having that open end communication with him, getting the support that I needed, having the routine and structure, focusing on my habits, having a lot of volume in my meals, incorporating desserts, I guess all of those things together have kind of gotten me to this point now where I'm able to just eat things I love in moderation. And, you know, a lot of people always message me on social media and say, but like, how can you eat Cocoa Pops? That's so unhealthy. And, you know, how do you promote people um, having chocolate? And, you know, at, at the end of the day, I just think back to, to what, is re what is really unhealthy and what is really healthy. If I... If I look back at my life, you know, just a couple years ago, that for me is unhealthy. That was being unhealthy is me basically eating myself into my own grave because that is exactly what I was doing. What I do now and the way I eat now, focusing on, you know, the 80-20 rule and making sure to have 80% whole foods in my diet and 20% things I love, that is healthy eating. Like that, that is not going to kill you. That is you living your best life, um, eating foods that you love while still maintaining a good level of nutrition. I've definitely still had to learn a lot of coping skills along the way. When Vickers goes away to, to gigs over the weekend, it does get a little bit hard. I still get binging urges over the weekend. I still have binges. I still, um, you know, binge now and then every couple of weeks, every couple of months. But I don't binge excessively like I did before. My binges are a lot more spaced out than they were before. They're a lot more controlled. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel like um, one binge is going to turn into a month of binges. And that's very powering for me. You know, it's very empowering. I feel, I feel more in control of my choices now than, than I have ever before. So do I think binge eating is something that I can ever fully recover from? And if I'm dead honest, the answer is no. I don't think I'm ever gonna fully recover from binge eating. I think that, you know, this habit is almost like engraved into my brain and I don't feel like I will ever be able to truly let go of binge eating, but I can control it as much as I possibly can. And I can, you know, make the gaps between my binges a lot less. And that for me is enough. Like I'm happy just where I am at right now. Um, having a couple of binges every couple of months, it doesn't affect me as much as it did before. And I think that's a huge win for me. So as long as I can be in control of my choices most of the time of which I am right now, then I'm not too bothered about the fact that, that I'm never going to be able to rid it forever.
So if you are struggling with binge eating right now, I just want you to know that there is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You don't need to be stuck with binge eating forever. And yes, I don't know if the things that have worked for me are going to work for you. You should definitely get medical advice um, if you are really struggling. But just know that if you work hard on, on improving your relationship with food and you focus on getting routine and structure in your life and you take every day, one day as it comes, and learn to, to have a binge and let it go and move on as if nothing happened, those things really help me in my recovery. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful in some way. I'm sorry that I was a little bit emotional. This obviously is um, a very hard topic for me to talk about, but I hope you guys loved it and I'm sure I will see you at another binge eating video soon.